Today's video is sponsored by Native Sons Goods, makers of the most finely crafted heirloom quality guitar bag and camera straps on planet Earth. Native Sons are made from the finest hand-woven materials right here in the USA. They come in two or three inch widths and are fully customizable so you can play in style. Unlike other manufacturers, Native Sons straps are handmade one at a time with impeccable attention to detail. They are both riveted and sewn so they'll last multiple lifetimes. Treat yourself to a Native Sons Goods strap. The best part is, they come already gift wrapped. Hello and how's it going Phillies and Fellers, Brad the Guitologist here with another episode of Shitpost Friday Redux. Shitpost Friday Redux. We have brought it back. Uh, a lot of you were complaining and complaining and complaining for months and months on end. I could probably show you so many messages, it would get boring real fast, but uh, highly requested return of Shitpost Friday. So first up this week, I wanted to get the sad news out of the way. Uh, Charlie Pride, the great uh, country singer, uh, has passed away. Uh, he had performed his last performance at the CMAs recently, and that, of course, uh, is partly being blamed for his death. I'm not even going to say why they're, they're claiming he officially died. You can read the headline if you want to, but I'm, I'm not buying into it anymore. The man was 86 years old, so, I mean, you know, when you become a certain age, a lot of things are going to more easily knock you down than if you're younger, and that that's always been true. Uh, this isn't the first year that that has been true. Out of respect for the family, I'm not. that's a totally different subject, and I'm not going to get into that here. So, uh, But I do want to speak a little bit about Charlie Pride. You know, in this, uh, if you read this Los Angeles Times article, you know, they're talking a lot about him, uh, you know, kind of breaking the color barrier in country, being the Jackie Robinson of country music, uh, which to some degree is is definitely true for his time. Uh, there weren't really any other black performers in the genre uh, that would be labeled, I, s I suppose, as country music. You know, there obviously were black performers uh, in more of the, the sister genre of folk music. You know, there's always been black performers and, of course, blues as well, which is a very close uh, sibling of country music, but I guess strictly what you would call Nashville style country music. Uh, yes, he he did break that uh, color barrier, and uh, you know he was widely accepted uh, in that genre of music. And you know the proof is in the pudding on that one. I think country music and country music fans kind of get a bad rap for you know sort of uh, being the R word. You know I'm not going to mention that word here, but I think in the case of Charlie Pride, you know it was kind of proven to be false in a lot of ways because. You know, as this article points out, uh, he is the number two selling artist of all time on the RCA record label, uh, right behind Elvis Presley. Uh, so, you know, the number two selling artist on RCA is a, is a black country singer. And what does that tell you about the fans of country music, if that's true? Um, you know, there are a lot of great country acts on RCA records as well, and, and uh, to have him up there like that is... I think speaks a lot about the country music fans of, of both Charlie Pride's day and and today. You know, he even said himself in in uh, one interview that you know he never had any problems, uh, never never had any cat calls from the stage, never had anybody heckle him. That never did happen. I've never had one cat call I owed of something like Jackie Robinson went through in my whole career. To this very moment, when that question is asked and I say, "No, I haven't," I get that. I can't believe look up. You gotta be kidding, look up. I don't believe you. He was accepted by audiences. His, his career uh, blossomed very rapidly once uh, they started putting records out on RCA. They never had anybody, you know, call him the N word or you know be disrespectful to him uh, in that way. And I think really that does speak highly to the to the caliber of people, you know, who are fans of the genre overall. And uh, you know that's. And it speaks highly of, of Charlie Pride, you know, that he he uh, was the kind of person who could brush off little things and and uh, and present himself in such a way that you know people would accept him, even if it was odd, you know, to see a black man singing country music. You know, it it uh, he did he did break that color barrier. I'm not going to take that away from him. But if you go back to the roots of country music, if you go back to um, uh, you know, the time of, of Jimmy Rogers and the time Hank Williams famously learned his craft from a black man. Uh, so, I mean, it's not it's not outside the realm of uh, of possibility, you know, that that you would have black musicians 
you know, bordering on country music. I think it was just more of the fact that, uh, you know, the Nashville style of country music with the twang and everything sort of, uh, I guess, lent itself more to white audiences, but it, it wasn't it wasn't strictly white audiences. And, and uh, you know, Charlie Pride definitely proved that. You know, 2020 has not been kind um, to really anybody at this point, but, you know, it definitely hasn't been kind to country music. And, you know, we also lost... Uh, Charlie Daniels earlier this year. We also lost uh, Kenny Rogers. So, you know, the country singers of of my youth are starting to drop off, and uh, you know, it's it's kind of a sad thing. But it's making, I guess, it's making way for the new breed. And uh, you know, sadly, I think the new breed of country is has has largely been a style that I really don't get much into. But there's there are bright spots, and I, I look for the future you know, to be, uh, to be much brighter in country music, you know, you've got, you got a lot of artists like Chris Stapleton and, uh, and Jason Isbell and people like this who are doing more of a, you know, more of an Americana style of, uh, of country. And, you know, I think it kind of brings things back full circle and, uh, you know, there's, there's definitely hope in the genre. Uh, rest in peace to the great Charlie Pride and, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, his family can find peace as well. Wanted to show you this also. This is just an amazing story somebody sent me. Um, this was actually sent to me by uh, Tracy Estes of the Zombie Guitar Company out of Heron, Illinois. He emailed me and said, hey man, have you seen this? He had a customer wanting uh, this specific vintage brand guitar. Vintage, of course, being a brand of guitar that I think they're made in China Indonesia, somewhere like that. I can't remember for sure. But but he said he emailed his vint vintage rep and he said it wasn't in stock and he just left it at that. So he asked when it would be back in and he said he didn't know. And he the reason is the ship that was carrying his guitar and also the, just a lot of car other cargo, including a lot of other people's guitars, lost 1,800 cargo containers overboard at sea uh, in rough seas. I guess they were a few hundred miles off of Hawaii in the Pacific Ocean and ran into rough seas and storms. And uh, look at this, just complete disarray. They had to uh, kind of take a detour up to Tokyo and offload this ship and I guess rearrange all this and make sure that the, the cargo ship is okay. But man... What a huge 1,800 containers lost at sea. Imagine that, man. Imagine being the guy who lost all of that. Yeah, I'm sure somebody's got some insurance, but damn. They're probably not sealed tight enough to float, so I would imagine they pretty much sank to the bottom of the ocean. So I guess if you could pinpoint exactly where all this stuff sank, you could go out there and, and go scuba diving and find you a bunch of guitars and probably a bunch of other random stuff off the bottom of the ocean, but my goodness. But he's saying here he doesn't know how many uh, guitar companies lost stock from this accident, but 2020, leave us alone. Yeah, 20, 2020 indeed, leave us the hell alone. I'm not going to be sad to see this year go, that's for sure. They're coming to take me away, haha. -ha. Man. I had to go get in my hiding space, but they they passed by, so no blaze of glory today. <laughs> so on to the next bit of news. Guitar Center has exited Chapter 11 bankruptcy like a zombie from a George Romero dead shopping mall. <laughs> And they're coming back to an increasingly uncertain market for brick and mortar. Uh, as Phil McKnight recently reported, you know, there are brands that are starting to eschew brick and mortar stores altogether. They're not even selling stuff to mom and pop shops. So I, you know, I don't know what kind of landscape Guitar Center will be coming back into as far as retail. For the foreseeable future, it looks like, you know, at least the way that some of these idiots are talking, you know, they're going to try to keep crap shut, shut down for an extended period of time. And I don't know until they, I guess they destroy every single facet of, of polite society that's left. So who knows what the hell these globalist heads are doing. But anyway, so Guitar Center is coming back. 
Uh, and it looks like they're only doing so because they were able to secure $165 million in new equity from their uh, current owner, Ayers Management Corporation, as well as money from Carlisle Group and Brigade Capital Management. So they've brought two more asset management groups on board uh, to helm this thing, this monstrosity. Uh, and the thing is, you know, where did they get that money? Well, they got it from a bunch of new SAP investors, probably a bunch of you know, 401k, 401k investors who don't even look at their portfolios to know what the hell they're investing their money in. So it's going to be, you know, people like you, people like your neighbors, but just, you know, who don't really pay attention to what's in their 401ks. That's probably where they're getting a lot of this money. They also said they sold, uh, they're using proceeds from the bonds that they recently sold. And that was, that was not very long ago. That's just been within the past few weeks that they opened up these new bonds. I don't know who in their right mind was buying these bonds, but don't listen to them for any kind of investment advice. I can, that's all about all I can say about that. But anyway, uh, Guitar Center is exiting chapter 11 and you know, who knows, maybe they'll stick around for a while, but the problem is, you know, they're entering a, a much different retail environment than, you know, we even had a year ago. So I don't know where, where they're going to go from here. Uh, I can't imagine too many people wanting to go into a Guitar Center at this point to, to shop for instruments when you can just stay at home and do the same thing and, and have return policies that are so favorable, you know, because most of the stuff in guitar centers is all new stuff anyway, that frankly you can find anywhere else online. And, uh, you know, their used section has never been great in most of the stores I've ever been in. There are a few exceptions to that. There are some guitar centers that do specialize more in vintage and used, and those might do pretty well. Um, but you know, the ones who don't specialize in vintage and used gear, uh, what, you know, what's the reason of going in a brick and mortar store at this point anyway, unless you're just in some kind of pinch in a weird city and you have to get guitar strings. There aren't very many acts touring right now to support it. So, you know, I don't know who, who knows the future's uncertain. And, uh, maybe that's why this Eric Clapton Strat, uh, failed to attract a single, solitary bid you know i don't know if this was bad timing or if um you know if gc's bankruptcy did affect uh, this and maybe spooked off some people who normally might have bid on a guitar like this and parked some cash in it maybe it's just the fact that uh you know they that anybody who would uh normally bid on something like this had already been hitting hit hit hard this year and just didn't have the money to sink into it who knows maybe it was covid maybe it was election uncertainty uh I think the timing was probably pretty poor because with all the other stuff going on, they've got a an auction for a, a, a guitar with a $1 million opening bid, you know, which the million dollar opening bid on this guitar, which is uh, nicknamed uh, Slow Hand that Clapton used only for slide on stage, uh, is even higher than what the uh, final bid was on his Blackie Strat. Some people were probably spooked off by the price. They were spooked off by the timing and stuff, too. They even flew Tyler Larson of Music as Win all the way from, I guess, Nashville to uh, New York City to highlight this thing and to film a video about it. So they, they flew him out to film this video, which he did, and still couldn't attract a single bid. So I don't know what that says about the state of the current guitar market or the vintage market or what. Passes, passes the smell test. You know, it also occurred to me here that uh, anybody who would have enough money to buy this would probably also not be interested in seeing a YouTuber handle the thing anyway, because it's not really going to add value over and above what Clapton has already added to the thing, for one. And secondly, they probably want to control the media exposure of the guitar as well. I mean, they want to be the ones to expose it and to put it on YouTube and all that stuff and explore it, not, you know have it done beforehand for them. So I, I think this might actually be a detriment to the desirability of the instrument rather than an asset. Last bit of news I wanted to highlight is this. Uh, the Ventures uh, are releasing a documentary film on uh, the history of the band. Uh, of course, The Ventures uh, featured lead guitarist Noki Edwards, uh, who was their guitarist for a long time. Now, he started out on bass, and at one point he and another fellow switched. Uh, but this should be a really cool documentary. The Ventures, of course, 
uh, one of my favorite bands of all time. They're one of the bands that inspired me to get into guitar in the first place and uh, definitely should be worth watching. That will do it for the news. <laughs> All right, guys, to round out this shit post Friday, I thought I would show you some footage from a recent trip I took over to Steve Wilson's studio once again. Uh, during this trip, I was fortunate enough to play a 1957 and a 1965 Stratocaster uh, owned by Greg Martin of the Kentucky Headhunters. Of course, last time I was there uh, before this and uh, met him for the first time, I was able to play his... Uh, his famous Hank Les Paul from 1958, and that was just a great time. And he uh, was gracious enough to come back, and invite they invited me back over to check out a couple of Stratocasters. So uh, let's look at some footage from that day. And he said, you know, the other word, the record company basically told him, hey, you know, that'll never oh work. God. It's a stupid name, you know. Three people think, and then guess what? Right <laughs> after that, probably feel fresh about exactly. Yeah, you know. Exactly. And he I saw, said, I, I saw, got, he said, I, I saw got that grilled man. on that. I saw that man. Yeah, I guarantee there's yeah. going to be one. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's the, that's the uh, creek caster. <laughs> That's the creek caster. Okay, so when you say creek caster, that's literally it fell into a creek, you say? Well, back in around 2000, uh, the headhunters had played a little. Uh, we came in off the road and we played a. Uh, private show at a factory and then the next day I did a session in Glasgow and I took that guitar in a junior and uh, so I come home at night I was really tired from being on the road and I go in and I don't take the guitars out of the car the van and uh, I'm watching Nick at night next thing I wake up the next morning and the TV's on and I'm going oh and I go out to get the guitars and that guitar wasn't in there and the uh, junior, the Les Paul Junior was still there in the case. You could tell. And I thought, God, I'll leave the guitar at the studio. And it became apparent that somebody had raided the neighborhood and it stole, <laughs> it stole this was in a, um, a tweed gig, gig bag. You know, like, it looked like golf clubs or yeah. something like that. So they must have opened it up and went, look, a guitar. And about a mile from where I live, they flew it over a bridge into a shallow creek. So they <laughs> they just didn't want this 1957 no, Stratocaster. They didn't want it. It's like, oh, that's garbage. Yeah, yeah they wanted. They thought it was guns or something or this is, this golf is, clubs. This is know. why. Uh, this is why. Never leave thieves them. never win too many intelligence contests. Yeah, don't <laughs> leave them. Don't leave guitars and. Vans, and I Man. can't get it back, thank God. You know. So it, what what damage had been done by the uh, the creek? Uh, that, the pe more the, paint. The paint the stuff? Yeah, yeah. It got a relic. It swelled up and the paint popped yeah, off. Yeah. yeah, I got more. When Ruth saw it, my wife, she but said. it sounded better than it did. <laughs> it's, when it just, yeah. it's a great sounding guitar. It really is. It's, it's a great recording guitar. Man, I Bob see. Bob Mossa, he said, this is a lifetime guitar. That's what he said. Yes, it is. Love it. You didn't that? reshape the snake at all? This is like V-shaped no, like that, this in the factory? That, that was it. Those early ones are V's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's 57. That's, it's probably got lighter strings on it. Should I don't know. I like lighter. Well, they're not bad if you, once you get used to them, you know. Well, that kid, man, I think that kid should be really proud of what y'all did for him. I'm excited about it. I think he's going to do, I think he's yeah. gonna do good, man. He's I feel like he'll be able to make a living with me. You say he's from Green, Greensburg? I think that's what he's going to do. Yeah. I know a lot of people in Greensburg. I wish you could have heard it before him and his oh, brother got a hold of it, though. They really did a great job. I understand. Look at, the, look at, the, look at this. Y'all have to be patient. Yeah, right there. Man. Where somebody has like loved the hell out of that high note. <laughs> I do too. He's super nice guy. Did you, did you love that high note like that? Into I that? Don't, I don't know. It, it was probably <laughs> that guitar was pretty well. Yeah, that guitar was somebody, in there. Somebody grabbed it. That guitar, that guitar was pretty well yeah. played when I got it. Yeah. I had My a clean '58, and I traded for. I wanted that one right there. What year did you get that guitar? Uh, probably in '91 or two. I've had a long time. That guitar oh. sounds really it good. It sounds really good. You're, right. you're, you're, good you're missing a screw. It's pretty worthless. Yeah, I know, uh, man. Yeah. Trash I know. it. I yeah. Know. Throw it over it the finally, bridge. It finally died. It finally fell out. Yeah, creek out did did you put the uh, five-way in it, or was it already yeah, in there? Yeah, I, I put it in there. I put it in there, man. I, then that guitar is open. That's just open E right there. I, that's a good slide guitar, actually. 
Didn't Matthew play that on the bus that day? Did mm -hmm. we have it? Yeah. And yeah. I played it yeah. too, and I thought, yeah. oh my God. Yeah, that's I a good one. What I, year I just, is that? Uh, that's 65. See, I love the 60s snacks. I just love You them. like that. You like the rosewood. I do. I you do. like them better than the maple. I do. Okay. I don't know well, why. Some people do. I think everybody I needs I think you need both. You know? Sam do on that. Absolutely. Um, that guitar. Maybe I've just never owned a That maple guitar maple. and a champ. Oh, yeah. They're great. I could see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that guitar. God. That to me is a feel good player right That's, there. It is. It's a good one, man. I wish to. This is one of the L serials. This is what, uh, what year? 61? 65. Five. So it's right at the, uh, I don't know, would that make it a, is it, is it an L? What's that mean? I don't even know. Is that well, they didn't start the L, L serials. They uh, start them in mid '60s sometime. I can't remember for sure. Is that '64 or '65? And if they had any L yeah. plates left over, I'm sure they used yeah, them. So. Yeah. I think I had a '60. I've had a couple '64 fenders, Man, not I've strats, had, but so fenders strat, that were. Yeah, I've had so many different strats. And, uh, there's a chicken in here. That's on. No, go ahead. That's on the. It's open. So just. Yeah, it's open. A. It's open. A. You can just 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 bar it over. You know. Yeah, next, I mean, you know, yeah. I, I've had so many different fenders. I had a, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm walking right No, you're yeah. fine. You're fine. Yeah. Just whatever. I was like, Hi. Would you like to go to Nashville <laughs> and be a country star? <laughs> you have you have thought about your future in music? You don't have to sing. <laughs> we can tune you out down there. <laughs> well, right now, it doesn't matter, maybe. we got all the technology. <laughs> now that we go. Shouldn't say stuff like that. Wait a minute. <laughs> Those guitars sound really good through an amp, though. They do. Yeah, it's got, really it's got, it's got a. May I? Yeah, I'm just saying. You got five minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, thank yeah. you. Go for it, man. Fine. It sounds, it was probably, so yeah, it'll sound good through what, that or the chant. Bless. Yeah, do you, do you ever put the bars in? I think it's $500 in? for it right now. Yeah, it is right. Do you ever put the bar in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the bar. I bet you the, yeah, get that surf guitar sound. Yeah. Come on, man. Come on. Sell it to me, Gray. I gotta have it. He's Jones. <laughs> well, give him about three months. Who knows? <laughs> no. Man, this probably needs some work. It, it does. I think, I think it needs some. Sorry about that. No, you're right. Martinized it. Yeah, Martinized or Phelps did. No. <laughs> Is the 50 what or no sorry 57 that v neck tells oh this is the 57 that's 57 this 65 i was backwards yeah anytime you feel that sharp v it's open e you want you want to play some it looks like uh it looks like remind me not for i suck a slide if you give me that i'd probably be lost yeah give a shot not for sure that's great that's
that that pop, really pops on that yeah. middle pickup. So Matthew played pretty good. Play a little slide on this. Uh, yeah, Greg. Greg, Greg here. here. Oh, I, I play, play just a little slide on it. Just a little slide. I, yeah, I'd suck on slides, so I, I don't want to embarrass myself too much. So you uh, helped Monty Raitt, is that what it was? Yeah. I was in Mellencamp's studio, and Bonnie yeah. Raitt came in for Farm Aid. When it was You know how I know E? Generals gathered in their masses. Oh, okay, yep. okay. This is D. This That's open e. D. Sorry about that. I've <laughs> been off the road too long. Generals gathered in their masses. What's next? Just like witches at black masses. Evil minds that plot destruction. <laughs> Sorcerer of disconstruction. <laughs> In the fields, the body's burning. As the war machine keeps turning. Here we go. To mankind, poisoning their brainwashed minds. Oh, Lord, yeah. Oh, Lord, yeah. Oh, Lord, yeah. That song's called what now? That's, that's war, pigs. war Pigs, but we're not doing that. That would, that would be pigs. actually really freaking awesome. Country, yeah, yeah, war yeah. Pigs country, like country, that. country War Pigs? Yeah. Country War Pigs. Don't, 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 don't. Don't, don't, don't. Like Just, the hogs in the trough. Uh, with where? Lash. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> anyway, that's enough of your entertainment for me today. You Best not to shake no, you're cool. It's actually got a built-in gimbal, this one. Okay, I'll start looking at that. Oh, now we can see. That's the first slide I could find in the... You gotta go? Yeah, I gotta get out of here. I hate to do it, but I hard in case you have yeah. Yeah. Sure. two hours to go. All right, guys, that'll do it for this shit post Friday. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, hit subscribe down below. We'll probably do uh, one of these every week. If not every week, we might do one every other week or something like that. 
I kind of want to ease back into it and not overextend myself here. I've got a lot of other things I need to get to, you know, so I, I don't want to overdo it and I don't want to wear out my welcome, so to speak. Anyway, so that'll do it. We'll see y'all later.